battle we know nothing about. That's right. I, I wish that I could say that was original, but uh, I was at the veterinarian's office and I saw this poster on the wall. And it said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a battle we know nothing about. Wow. I said, well, that'll preach right there. Uh, Shakespeare said, if the rocks can cry out, then I know I can get a, a sermon off of the uh, veterinarian's wall. Uh, be kind to everyone you meet. You don't know what people are going through. It, it's dangerous judging others. Uh, it's a dangerous practice. We don't have the capability. We don't have what it takes to be judges of others. Mm. There's a story told of a young couple that they purchased a, a house in a rural community. Uh, the neighbors were an older couple, Fred and Mary. And every morning, the young couple, the young woman, would hang out her laundry on the clothesline. Mary looked out the window and told Fred, uh, that young girl don't know how to wash clothes. Her, her clothes don't look too clean. And every day, every day, the young lady would hang out her laundry on, uh, the, on the clothesline, and Mary would go to that window every morning, and, and Fred just listened. Mary would say, that girl cannot wash clothes. Them clothes are not clean. One morning, Mary looks out of the window and, and she sees the laundry and it's sparkling clean. Uh, Mary said, oh, she finally got it right. I, I, I wonder what she learned. Fred looked and said, I, I, I know what it is. Mary said, well, what is it? Fred said, well, this morning I went and I washed all the windows. <laughs> The moral is, what window are you looking out of? All right. I tell you, judging others is dangerous. It, it defiles and it destroys. It tears down and it tips the scale. And only God is qualified to judge. Uh, he wants us to love and to leave the judging to him. So, so let's look at the text. Let's squeeze this text uh, just for a little bit. And uh, the first thing we see in verses 1 and 2, it says uh, there, there's a danger uh, because criticism comes from judging. Uh, don't, don't, don't criticize. Uh, the word says if you criticize, you will be criticized yourself. For that same measure. For others will treat you as you treat them. Uh, for believers, criticism shows a lack of Christianity. In James 4 and 12, it says, There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy, but you who are, who are you to judge your neighbor? We, we, we don't have the capability to judge others. Uh, and, and, and criticism shows a lack of control. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. Uh, so before you go out and start judging, you better uh, take control of yourself. God's people must learn to be Christ-controlled. I hear people talking about I got self-control. You better have some Christ-control. And, and criticism shows a lack of consecration. Uh, consecration is just being set apart. Christians are not only the most critical, but we're also the most unforgiving. Mm. And, and so when we criticize, uh, we're showing a lack of consecration, that we're not set apart. And, and Paul says in Ephesians 4 and 32, uh, and be kind to one another, right. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, Christ, has forgiving you of all of your sins. Christians uh, are to be kind and forgiving. Uh, but, but, but not only that, look at verse 3. Right? Uh, it says that uh, there's false concern that comes from judging. Uh, you, you know how we do. We want to judge up and tell on other people like we're concerned about them. Uh, did you see the 
the speck in his eye. We, we're not concerned about the speck. We just want to tell on that other person. Uh, seeing the moat, the small uh, little splinter in, in the brother's eye, but not seeing the beam, that big old log that's in your own eye. Why, why is it that we can always see the sins of others? You can never be forgiven of the sins of others uh, or confessing the sins of others. You need to confess your own sins. Uh, Paul told us in uh, Timothy, keep thyself pure. Uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 22, it says, learn to see your own sins first. Then another shortcomings will fade away. When you point out, when you point at somebody else, when you're pointing the sins out or pointing the problems out of others, you do know you have three pointing right back at yourself. Well, yeah. Watch how you try to judge others and uh, with that false concern, seeing another slackness. The Bible says that uh, we shouldn't judge, we shouldn't try to look at other people's shortcomings because only God can judge perfectly. But, but there's also condemnation in judging. Uh, verse 4 says, should you say, friend, let me help you with the little speck in your own eye when you can't even see because of that plank, that board, that big old log that's in your own eye. Stop trying to condemn. Uh, learn how to cleanse yourself first. Uh, learn how to daily cleanse yourself. In uh, first, Second Corinthians 7 and 1, it says, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence of God. We looking at other people and we living raggedy. And you better stop trying to judge others. And you do know uh, most of the time when we're judging and criticizing and looking at the faults of others, that's the very thing that we're doing. Uh, you've got to have some self-control before you start judging others. You've got to cleanse yourself and have some self-control. Uh, uh, learn how to control your tongue. Wow. Well. Psalm 34 and 13 says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Uh, keep your lips from evil. Control what comes out of your mouth. Control uh, uh, all that mess you be talking. I'm going to help somebody right now. Repeat okay. after Pastor. This is a three-step rule uh, you need to take before you open your mouth and talk about somebody. Are you ready? Yeah. Number one, repeat after me. Does it need to be said? Does it need to be said? Number two, does it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said by me? Number three, does it need to be said by me now? Does it need to be said by me now? Once you go through those three steps, a lot of mess that comes out of your mouth, will, it'll save you some arguments, Joyce. It'll save you some, some, some uh, heartache if you... Go through those three steps. Does it really need to be said? Does it need to be said now? And, and, and does it need to be said by me now? We, we need to learn how to consecrate our lips. Consecrate what comes out of our mouth. It will save you some trouble. Then we need to learn how to cons, uh, consecrate our self. Uh, uh, Psalm 139, it says, Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Uh, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the everlasting path. Before we go out trying to judge somebody, we need to consecrate ourselves. This is prayer of David needs to be our prayer. Lord, search my heart. See if there's any wickedness in me. And then, Lord, then, Lord, lead me on that path. I'm, I'm done, y'all. We ain't shouting today. But, but, but uh, the text also shows us that uh, there's cleansing from judging. Uh, you got to, you got to, uh, it's got to be personal at first. Look at what God, look what Jesus says. He says, thou hypocrite. You must clean your own life before you can help others. How are you going to look at that little speck of dust in somebody else's eye when you're going around with this board in your eye? It's personal. But then there's, then there's a purging. First, cast out the beam in your own eye. 
get the mess out of your own life so that you can see clearly. You looking uh, through lenses that are foggy because yeah. you got so much sin in your life. You got so so many clouds in your own life. You trying to look at me and you got all that mess going on in your own life. Purge yourself. But there's a plan in it. Uh, and then shalt thou see clearly and cast out the moat, uh, cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Uh, once we take out the beam in our own eye, then we can go and help our brother. But until we do that, until we're purged and cleansed and uh, we take self-inventory, we can't uh, judge anybody else. Uh, James 4 and 8 says, before we can help others, we must be right with God. One cannot live hypocritically and be able to help others spiritually. And so all the misconduct in our own life, uh, we're, we're judging others, we're really indicting ourselves. Uh, because that same thing we see in others are, is the same thing that we can't stand in ourselves. Uh, remember, we are to love people. Uh, let God judge them. Uh, it's not our place to judge others. I'm done, yo. But there's a story told about a man, and he's traveling on a train with his two children. Uh, the two little boys are mischievous, and they're running around uh, the train compartment. Uh, they're doing what little children will do. Uh, they're jumping on the seats and they're uh, running around the compartment. Uh, and, and the people on the train are beginning to get agitated. Every now and then the father, uh, they look up at their dad and the dad looks at them and he smiles. Uh, the train uh, continues and it's evening time. And everyone on the train wants to get some rest. Uh, but the children are still running around the compartment, still jumping on seats, and finally one of the passengers couldn't take it anymore. And he goes to the father and he says, Sir, you need to control your children. Uh, they're getting on everyone's nerves. Uh, they're jumping around, and it's your duty as a father to make sure that they sit down and behave themselves. And, and the father responded, he, he said, Sir, I've been trying to figure out how to do it, how to say it. Uh, my wife went to visit her parents, uh, and she, on the way, she died in an accident. And I'm taking the two little boys to see their grandparents and to uh, see, uh, make arrangements, and I haven't figured out how to tell them yet. And so the people on the train, they heard the man's explanation, and they began to look at the children differently now. They weren't mischievous children anymore, but they looked like beautiful little flowers that they needed love poured out onto them. Uh, the father became silent again and began to smile at his children. Uh, all I'm trying to say is we don't know what people are going through. Uh, we never know what's going on in somebody else's life. So we need to be careful when we begin to judge others uh, because uh, we need to be kind because we never know what other people are struggling with. We never know what other people are going through. Jesus gives us the example in this parable. Be careful of judging others, lest ye be judged. Take the plank out of your own eye before you go and try to remove the little speck out of your brother's eye. I'm glad that Jesus gives us the example on being kind and loving one another. Uh, like that father, we don't know what people are going through. We don't know what uh, people have gone through. So before we 
we look down our broad nose at somebody and try to judge others. We need to understand that everybody is going through something. Our life's not easy. Uh, and everybody has a fight that they're fighting. So be careful when you judge. I'm done, y'all. Come on, let's give God some prayer. I would be remiss if we didn't at this time open the doors of the church. There may be someone that is outside of the ark of safety, one that has never given their life to Christ. We invite you to come today while the blood is still running warm in your veins. While you still have an opportunity to confess that Jesus is the Christ. I'm glad there was no initiation that I had to pay or no creed I had to recite. The Bible says that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, then we shall be saved. The cost of that was Jesus dying on the cross because he's concerned about us. If there's none, if there's one today that has never given their life to Christ, we invite you to come now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Is there one? Come on, come to Jesus.
go before them to guide them, behind to protect, and on either side to prop them up. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present a spotless before your throne. May the grace of God and the sweet holy communion rest, rule, and abide with us, henceforth now and forevermore, in the people of God's name.